Welcome to Arts and Leisure on the HAN Network. This is our weekly program featuring everything that is coming up in the area's music, arts, and entertainment scene. We will interview local artists, authors, musicians, and even some nationally recognized names who may be performing here in our area. We will have movie reviews and film suggestions from the real dad, Mark Schumann, and etiquette tips from Catherine Michaels. This is your all-access pass, and here are your hosts. Arts and Leisure editor Sally Sanders and our entertainment reporter Steve Coulter. Welcome to Arts and Leisure on the HN Network. I'm your host Steve Coulter. I'm joined on the couch with Sally Sanders. Sally, we've got a great show today. We've got Bert Bernardi with Pentacino Productions coming in to talk about their uh, upcoming family play. And, and then we Earth also Day. And we have the Earth Festival in Bridgeport yeah. with Stephanie Campbell and Stephanie Brown. But to start it off, we're going to do Tribeca Film Festival, which started last night. Um, and is going to run through Sunday, April 24th. There's a lot of movies. Oh. I've gotten 200 emails. There's, I think, 500 different shorts, feature lengths, documentaries. Yeah, um, and 100 we're gonna, features. Yeah, <laughs> and we're yeah. going to try to get through, uh, name, some, uh, name some for our audience so they can know what's playing and maybe they can go check them out while the festival's down in New York. Yeah. Um, what's one that you're looking forward to? One that to? caught my eye, uh, of course, is Viola Davis in custody. She's playing a judge in this one, and, and um, from what Mark uh, Schumann, our real dad, says, um, this could be her chance for an Oscar, maybe. Oh, perfect. Yeah. Because she got snubbed with the help. Yes, yes. <laughs> so they're going to try to make this into a, an actual Big, campaign. Yes. Because some of these movies, people that don't know how Tribeca works, a lot of them just go away. Yeah, the, right. a lot of them are independence first films. Yep. So what's on your list? My The first one on mine is Elvis and Nixon. I'm a history oh, yeah. guy. I love the presidents. I love music. And I also love Kevin Spacey. And I'm a huge Michael Shannon fan. This movie really? has everything and more that I want in a movie. It has two of my favorite actors. It has music. It has history. And I didn't really even realize when they met in 1970, in December of 1970, that it wasn't a planned meeting. Elvis just, just showed, showed up. up at the White House. Because <laughs> you know what? He's the king and he can do what he wants. So I love that kind of spont uh, spontaneity in the plot, and I love the two actors, and I think that's going to be a really uh, good one. Colin Hanks is also kind of the third lead actor in that. Makes its premiere on Monday night, uh, world premiere April 18th, for those who are going to be following that one. It's going to yeah, be a good one, that, I think. Yeah, that, that's going to be a good one. Um, Equals, which is an interesting film, uh, sci-fi uh, romance. And you don't find a lot of sci-fi movies at these no. film festivals. And so good actors, Kristen Stewart and, and Nicholas Holt. And I didn't realize when I first saw his face that he was the boy about in a boy. About a Boy. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He was in Mad Max last year. He's one yeah. of the best parts of that movie. He's yeah, great. He, he's and a Kristen Stewart's fellow. actually kind of turned it around. She's become a serious actor. She has. From I mean, the, the Twilight yeah, Clouds days. of Sils Maria showed how. Right. How, she almost got an Oscar was. nod for that. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, speaking of kind of showing the range, The Devil in the Deep Blue Sea is one that's going to be on my list. It's starring Jason Sudeikis and uh, Jessica Beal. It makes its world premiere tonight, actually, down in the city. Um, originally, Jeffrey Dean Morgan was supposed to be the lead, and Chloe Moritz uh, or Grace Moritz was supposed to be the uh, the child actor. Uh -huh. She's been replaced by Maisie Williams from Game of Thrones. Uh -oh. Those who like Arya Stark are going to want to see this movie. And Jessica Biel plays a pregnant woman who dies, and Jason Sudeikis is kind of over. Uh, you know, he's playing the love interest, and he's got to you know deal Broken with that. Heart, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So that one should be interesting, showing his range because he's only done comedies. This will be his first real drama. And then also, welcome to the big stage for Maisie Williams from Game of Thrones. She's a great actress in that show, and I'm excited to see what she can do in a feature-length film. Good. Okay, another one that the point about the Tribeca Festival is that you get to see a lot of foreign films. All yes. In one, oh, all there's in one. so many foreign films. It's crazy. And one that caught my eye was is called As I Open My Eyes. Oh, I did. I got the press which, release about which that is, one. Which um, is the first feature by uh, Leila Bouzid, and it's it's about a Tunisian rock singer, a, a young woman who who is just at the, they're just at the edge of Arab Spring, and it's about her experiences. Uh, I think it should be an interesting uh, film to see. Yeah, that's going to be great. And yeah. Tunisia is on kind of a hot, uh, they, they won an Academy Award, or they were nominated, I think, for a the first time. Thing, yeah. yeah, at the Academy Awards for uh, Best Foreign uh, Picture. Well, it's nice to see that culture is continuing there, even, even in the face of exactly. all the difficulties they've been having. Exactly. It is cool. Yeah. To go back to American culture, another one on my list is The Family Fang, which is about a pair of uh, a brother and a sister. The brother is played by Jason Bateman, who's doing the directing, writing, and oh, acting. Yeah. And Nicole Kidman is actually playing his sister, believe it or not. Kind of an odd pairing. And so they're going to find Christopher Walken, who's their dad, who's gone missing. 
And so that, I think, could be a lot of fun. It's uh, Jason Bateman's second movie that he's directed, and it's going straight to On Demand May 6th for those who uh, want to watch it next month when it's, uh, you can watch it at home. It premieres at the film festival tomorrow, or actually I should say Sunday, April 17th. Great cast. I mean, you got two Oscar winners, and Jason Bateman's always great. And also doing a little bit of drama, comedian doing drama. Yeah, yeah, he's Pe good. People he's are good. trying to show the range of the Tribeca Film Festival. Well, it's an opportunity to spread your wings. Exactly. Um, I'm not sure how much this is wing spreading, but The Meddler is, yes. is bringing Susan Sarandon and J.K. Simmons together, which has to be... That a is great a dynamic pair. duo. You can't yeah. get much better than that. Um, Sarandon's playing like the earth mother, um, meddling mother of, of a, a young woman who moves across country, and, and then Susan Sarandon follows her <laughs> to, to help arrange her life and, and encounters um, J.K. Simmons, who's described as a motorcycle riding, free range chicken farming ex cop, which, you know, that I mean, he's going to be perfect as. Yeah, I was going to say that. That's the, that's the role he was born to play. I think so. Other than yelling at Miles Teller, of course, in Whiplash. Yeah, yeah, but it, it shows get his range better. too. Are they going to try to blow that one out as well and make it a? I think. Okay. I think that's going to be. You can't have a Susan Sarandon come. I mean, she hasn't done a lot recently. This could be a comeback story, come Oscar season, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, maybe we'll see. Just saying, just putting it out there for the yeah. audience. Yeah, we'll see how well it does. Keep an eye on that one, the okay. meddler. Um, I've got one, A Kind of Murderer, with Patrick Wilson. I love Patrick Wilson from Fargo. Uh -huh. He was dynamic this past winter in Fargo. He's going to be starring across uh, from, actually, uh, oh, Vincent Caratissier uh, from Mad Men, Pete Campbell. Really? Yeah. So it's, and then I'm you got Jessica Pete's Beals in that one job. as well. Yeah. Jessica Beals all over this film festival. I've gotten, I think, nine different emails about So she's like a go-to actress for indies. I guess so. Yeah. Yeah. Her and Justin Timberlake who's also doing the music in The Devil in the Deep Blue Sea, All right. I should mention. One more. Yeah, well, you, you got a fifth one. Well, I've, this is uh, The Phenom. Oh, okay. I, okay. I, I, Ethan Hawke plays the father of uh, a fabulous pitcher in, in Major League Baseball. and That one it, I could see becoming big. And and Paul Giamatti, of right. course, is, is the psychiatrist. He who's, was so good on the finale of Billions on Sunday. I had to get that in. Oh, well. Oh, he was dynamic. But Paul Giamatti comes in to help. Um, Ethan Hawke's son, who's played by um, Johnny Simmons, get his head together after um, he's... Johnny Simmons has a few things going on yeah. in, in the festival, too. His but Johnny Simmons loses his fastball, basically, or, right. or his, his control, and, and they're trying to figure out how to get him back together. And, of course, Ethan Hawke is like the quintessential uh, sports dad. Yeah. Yeah. He's a great actor. We just talked about him last week. His uh, Chet Baker movie is out. Yeah. Yeah, that's playing at Jacob Burns Center and a few other local theaters. Can't go wrong with Ethan Hawke. He's no. a great actor. My final one is The Ticket, starring Dan Stevens from Downton Abbey. Oh. He's starring uh, in this movie across from Malin Ackerman, who's also on Billions. Great show. Mm -hmm. Highly recommend it to our viewers. <laughs> um, and so that one's my last one. I really think that's going to be a good movie. Um, he loses his sight, and then he gains it back. So yeah, yeah. There's a couple and movies he, about He eyesight. turns out not too nicely. Yes. Yes. Yeah, yes. So I'll believe it at that. Oliver Platt's also in that one. Um, before we head off to our first commercial break, let's do documentaries real fast because there's a lot of good documentaries in this yeah. film festival. Uh, top on my list is Tickling Giants, which is uh, a documentary that um, Sarah Tax Taxler, who's the Daily Show senior producer, mm -hmm. um, did about Bassem Youssef, who is was described as the Egyptian John Stewart. He started a political satire show back when uh, Mubarak was in power. Oh wow! And um, He's, he's just a marvelous guy. I mean, he's so dynamic on film and, and on TV, and I think it's going to be a, a great documentary. I hope that one's available and on demand soon. I'm so sure it will be. See I'm it sure quickly. it will be. Yeah, you definitely want to see that. I've got For the Love of Spock, which is uh, made by Adam Nimoy, who's Leonard Nimoy's son. And so it's kind of his relationship with his dad and his dad's relationship with the character and how the character evolved over that time. That should be and, interesting. Uh, yeah, it, it sounds like it's a really good one for Star Trek fans. I also have Southwest of Salem, which is about the San Antonio Four. After Spring, which is produced by Jon Stewart, Betting on Zero, which is a financial thriller. And then I believe you have one more to recommend. I have one more, which is Life Animated, which is a documentary about Owen Susskind, who was a kid who was on the um, autistic spectrum and was unable to communicate until they figured out that he had memorized all of the Disney films. And it was his way of connecting to the world. And, now and that is a movie I have to go see. It's his father wrote a book about him, and this is. But they were simultaneously apparently filming this kid because he's he's an adult now and and pretty well independent. But as a child, he he didn't communicate at all. 
So this is this is kind of his story. As, That's brilliant. Yeah, very brilliant. It's 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 going to be fun to see. Now I, I hate to even throw another name out there after that one because that sounds like it's the best. But the closing night is next uh, Saturday, the twenty third and the twenty fourth. Next Saturday and Sunday, seven p.m. and ten p.m. The bomb, which isn't even a documentary. It's an interactive experience. People can still get tickets for this, uh -huh. uh, and it's at three sixty. So they're it's all about nuclear energy and. Um, the arms race basically and it's it's over your head and it, it's all over the whole theater it's it sounds, supposedly going to be crazy and that live music is being played during it it's sounds like a really interactive experience and, and once frightening in a lifetime. probably yes and definitely frightening and on that note i think we should head off to our first commercial break when we come back we'll have bert bernardi on to talk about uh, fast times at mermaid, at mermaid high cool it's time to come back to hometown banking where people are taken into account, not just balances. Where community comes first. A place where there's more than one kind of interest. Where automation will never replace consideration. Where they not only know your name, they know your dog's name too. It's time to expect more. It's time to bank well. Bank smart, bank local, bank well. Walter Stewart's Market in New Canaan is your time-saving local shopping destination for the best of spring. Find many of your favorite products, from great specials on everyday items to the freshest organic produce, artisanal cheeses, and grass-fed steaks. Chop off your knives to be sharpened. Grab a beautiful bouquet of spring flowers and stop in next door for a wine tasting. Plus, their personal staff is always ready to lend a helping hand. So stop in to Walter Stewart's Market, 229 Elm Street, today, or shop online at stewartsmarket.com. Join the HAN Network and Make-A-Wish Connecticut to help make travel wishes come true for local kids with life-threatening medical conditions. Donate your unused airline miles to the HAN Network Wishes in Flight campaign. Over 70% of wishes granted involve travel, and your unused airline miles can help make kids' dreams become a reality. Plus, once you donate your miles to Make-A-Wish, they will never expire. Donate your unused miles and help the HAN Network share the power of a wish. What's happening up in Hartford and what's trending in the nutmeg state? Join Kate Chaplinski and Josh Fisher on CT Pulse Live Wednesdays at 12.30 to find out. We talk to the leaders and newsmakers while breaking down the stories you should be paying attention to each week. With the help of HAN's editorial cartoonist Doug Smith, we take a humorous look at the news of the week. We talk about everything you were told you should avoid bringing up in polite company. CT Pulse Wednesdays at 12.30 on the HAN Network. You are watching the HAN Network, and you're not alone. Nearly half a million viewers enjoyed our broadcasts in the first five months. Advertise on the network that reaches Fairfield County, Connecticut's most engaged audience. Contact Jessica Murren, Advertising Director, at 203-273-7312 or email jessica at han.network. Welcome back to Arts and Leisure on the HAN Network. Sally and I are joined on the couch with Bert Bernardi of Pentacino Productions. Bert, you've got a wonderful play coming to the stage. We do. The, it's, it's a combination of The Little Mermaid and Fast Times at Ridgemont High. The Little Mermaid set in the 80s going back to high school. Right. Tell us, where did you get this idea from? <laughs> How did, well, this come, how did this come to be? Everything that we do at Panettino, we like to do a little differently. We like to uh, tell a familiar story in a new way. And uh, Jimmy Johnsmeyer, uh, who is our, our partner in the business, and Justin Rugg, who is my composing partner and writes all of our music, we sat around and thought, well, what could we do with The Little Mermaid that hasn't been done before? And um, when we thought of the title, Fast Times at Mermaid High, oh, it so suddenly good. made sense. <laughs> she comes up from the sea and she finds herself in school. In the 80s. Uh, in the 80s. <laughs> and she meets a sort of uh, uh, surfer dude. And, Is uh, it Spicoli? Is uh, it Sean Penn? It, it's actually called Spicoli. <laughs> 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 so things are a little different. Uh, the characters are all there. You'll, there's uh, references to... Um, all sorts of teen movies from the 1980s of the John Hughes set. And, oh, perfect. Um, little Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Right. There's a little bit of everything, and uh, I think if you go through on a fine tooth comb, you'll be like, oh, wow, look at that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> How many songs did you have to write? Uh, there are, gee, there's probably 12 uh, songs. Wow. And they all relate to the 80s. They're in uh -huh. the style of the 80s. 
Uh, the opening number is pretty cool. It's called Welcome to the 80s. And when I, when I wrote it, I just was trying to come up with a list of songs that are from the 80s. Like, what, you know, what songs can we reference? And I looked at the list and it sort of like it told a story. Just the song titles. So the opening number is called Welcome to the 80s. And uh, it's all made up of lyrics from 80s songs, the, the titles of 80s songs. Kind of a hodgepodge of the yes. whole decade. Yes. That's pretty cool. So it's, yeah, it's really cool. It's a great song. And too. so the main character is The Little Mermaid, or did you give her a new name? Um, well, uh, she's not, well, everyone knows The Little Mermaid from the Disney film mostly. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, and so she's Ariel. So this is Mariel. Mariel. Okay. And since we're in the 80s, um, you know, I thought of Mariel Hemingway. So she's Mariel Swimmingway. <laughs> oh. And that's oh, probably, uh, hopefully that's the first big laugh in the show. <laughs> yeah, it's that, like word association you do then. You yeah. said you have one word and then the next oh, one comes uh, up. Uh, king of puns. Right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and now you've been writing for a long time now, right? Three yeah. decades. Is, yes. is this one of the most oh, fun? I'll, is this one of the most fun projects that you've put together? You know, um, they're, they're all really fun, and they're all really different. Um, I've written uh, the story of The Little Mermaid three different ways now, and um, it's, it's so much fun to just sort of start from scratch. Well, you know, you've, even if you knew, oh, there was a bit in that show that worked five or six years ago, well, let's start from scratch and, and see what else we can come up with. So the three of you... Uh, producers sit together and just we, toss? We do. We come up with, this, with our season of shows every year. We're uh -huh. actually working on what we're doing starting in the fall um, now. And um, yeah, we, we sort of vamp on each other, you know, come up with ideas. And, uh, you know, if we, all, if we all laugh at the same time, we know we, we feel you've got that, it. We, that's got something it. pretty good. Yeah. And you've got a great venue, the Center for the Arts in downtown Milford. It's perfect. It's just the right size. Um, you know, uh, it, it's about 100 seats. Uh, yeah. it, it's great. It's right there in the center of town. Our audiences love it. It's easy to park. Um, you know, there's uh, shops and stores and lots of restaurants and coffee and ice cream, all within a walking distance. You said so the great. kids like uh, taking the train to it. Yeah, we have some, uh, some uh, audience members who at every show, they will take the train, some from um, Norwalk and some from New Haven. And that's sort of fun for the kids yeah. that literally you get off the train in Milford and you are at the venue, so it's great. Which is at 40 Railroad Avenue, right? Yep, yep. Yeah. And I'm sure it's fun for the kids, young and old, to revisit the 80s. What was that yeah. like for you? You mentioned kind of doing the whole songs. Like, yeah. <laughs> did you forget kind of the things that were popular back then? Yes, or? absolutely. Yeah. It's like, oh, we need to reference this, we need to reference yeah. that, you know. Um, and the styles, the fashions. Uh, Jimmy, uh, who is the co-producer, is also our costume designer. Uh -huh. And so he's recreating some 80s fashion, which are really fun. You must be looking <laughs> for some wigs for big hair, too. There's, there's, there's some big hair, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, Little Mermaids with big hair. That's what we're yeah. sort of subtitling it. Um, and, um, you know, coming up with the dance crazes from in the choreography, oh, yeah. we reference a lot of the, those um, sort of things. So, Have fun. you ever set a play in the 80s or a decade like this or no? I don't think so. Um, yeah. I've done a, set a lot of things in the 50s and the 60s, which was my favorite sort of time periods uh -huh. to explore. Yeah, there's uh, plenty of craziness, though, in the yeah. 80s. There's oh. so many different movies yes. and songs to reference. Yeah. The show should be great. It starts uh, April 22nd, next Friday at 7 p.m. 7.30 p.m., I should say. Yep. It's going to be playing Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays uh, until May 1st. Mm -hmm. So a whole week, nine days, yep. I should say. Two productions on Saturday, 2 p.m., 5 p.m., and Sunday at 2 p.m. Is that right? Did I get that, everything? That's right. And yeah. Pentacino.com for tickets online. That's it. You find everything there. That's yep. P-A-N-T-O-C-H-I-N-O. Thank you. Com. There you go. You're right. And, <laughs> and 40 Railroad, uh, Railroad Avenue, as you pointed out, is yeah. the... Uh, and, and do you have a, an age uh, suggestion for this show? Do you, do you know, you know, or um, does um, it just depend on your kid? It sort of depends on your kid, but we have a really wide age range who come mm -hmm. and follow us. Uh, it, the shows are exciting and visual or even a, a lap child to sort of follow and fall uh -huh. into the wonder. Lots of music and costumes and color. Uh, older, older children will be able to follow, oh, I get it, it's a Little Mermaid, and that's yeah. this one, and that's, this is what's happening. And then um, even older than that, and, and adults will, will get the, 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 you know, the humor. The puns and, and the jokes, right, yeah. Right, yeah. So there's really something for everyone. Yeah, it sounds like it'll be a great time. Yeah. Bird, thank you so much for coming on the couch and talking about it. Pleasure to be Best here. Best of luck to you next week when it premieres, thank and I you. hope a lot of people come out and see it. We're going to head to our second commercial break, and we come back, we're going to have Stephanie Brown and Stephanie Campbell on the couch to talk about the Earth Day Festival that's happening in Bridgeport next week. 
For over 25 years, Mike Sizzik Painting and Wallpapering has been the name to know for residential and commercial properties in Fairfield County. He uses only the top brands, including Benjamin Moore, for impeccable preparation and lasting quality. Call Mike now and receive $500 off any job over $7,000. Mike is currently accepting reservations for spring, so call him today at 203-770-8869 or 203 203- 972-3310. For your custom painting, finishing, and staining needs, it's Mike Sizik. At the Sylvan Learning Center of Darien, experienced teachers and personalized academic support equals superior results. Our certified teachers uncover skill gaps, address specific needs, and help students realize greater academic success and increased confidence. We're enrolling now. Individualized after-school tutoring and reading, math, history, elementary math, algebra, geometry, calculus, high school science, and study skills. For a free consultation, call 203-655-3276 or email gmcsylvan at gmail.com. Had a sports injury or a slip and fall that needs immediate care? Coastal Ortho Express Urgent Care gives you direct access to an orthopedic specialist fast without an appointment. Biking, golf, tennis, soccer, whatever the sports injury is, sprain or fracture, Coastal Ortho Express can help. Coastal Ortho Express Urgent Care open Monday through Saturday in the I Park building at 761 Main Avenue in Norwalk or go to CoastalOrthoExpress.com. That's CoastalOrthoExpress.com. Like them on Facebook. I'm Kate Chaplinski. Join us for Coffee Break weekdays at 11 to get the latest Connecticut news, weather, high school sports, and more. News doesn't get any more local than on Coffee Break on the HAN Network. I'm Denise DiGregoli, the host of The Drive on the HAN Network. Join me Tuesdays for some motivational, intelligent talk with a little humor as we visit with people who live their lives mindfully. Tune in to The Drive live on Tuesdays, 1230, here on the HAN Network. Welcome back to Arts and Leisure on the HAN Network. Steve Coulter here, joined on the couch with Stephanie Brown and Stephanie Campbell from the Maggie Daly Art Cooperative. You guys are putting on the Earth Festival in downtown Bridgeport next Thursday, April 21st. First annual, I should say. Yes. Are you guys excited? Very excited, yeah. 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 And so this is a lot of um, reused stuff that's being repurposed as art. How did you kind of come up with that concept and also obviously put it together with Earth Day? Well, we did a recycled art show last year just with, uh, within our program um, for Earth Day just to kind of make people aware of how you can reuse things you might perceive as trash um, to kind of make people think outside of the box. And it was a huge success, so we wanted to do it again this year, but on a larger scale. So this year we actually it's have... It's on a larger scale yes, this year. Yes, it is. You've got, you're, you're Steve Scales coming in to play drums. Yes. You've got food trucks. You've got all sorts of different things. It's going to be a fun day. Yeah, and we actually have... Um, there's three different art, recycled art shows all right. as part of this event. So. And this is for people of all ages, too? Mm-hmm. Kids and... Okay, cool. Generation. Yeah, Absolutely. awesome. Teaching them a good message early on that yes. the earth is important and we Absolutely. we got to be take care of it, right? Exactly. And so, uh, the arts. how did you guys get uh, kind of together with? The, I think it's the Kennedy Center, right? MDAC and the Kennedy Center f- came together for this, and the Bijou Theater, I should say, as well. MDAC is actually part of the Kennedy Center. Oh, okay. We're the arts cooperative, and through a regional initiative grant, we coupled with the Bijou Theater. So it's been a great collaboration. Awesome. And so the Bijou is also hosting events inside of it or the event will culminate in a celebration at the Bijou ah, Theater. Wonderful. That's where we're gonna and really great party venue down. There in the yeah. downtown Bridgeport <laughs> Absolutely. area. Absolutely. Absolutely. And so people who want to attend, uh, what kind of art is gonna be on exactly exhibiting? Well in the morning from ten to twelve um, is where the whole shebang gets started at our location, ten forty two Broad Street, and that's the Maggie Daly Arts Cooperative. So um, there'll be uh, recycled arts and crafts in our studio and then in our gallery there's a recycled art show that's um, all artwork made by other Kennedy Center programs day programs will be represented there and that's um, recycled art so they're using you know things like plastic water bottles reused cardboard really anything that they can get their hands on that inspires them right. and that's Shopping really the cars. that's really yeah that's the theme for all the art shows but it's so interesting to see how people do it in their own way and take the same concept and really make something unique 
yeah, you think of a water bottle and you could do so many different things with it. Absolutely. Repurpose it in so many different ways. Mm -hmm. The plastic. Um, there's also Tai Chi. There's going to be a drum circle. Talk about some of the other events that are going on besides just the art itself. Well, yeah, we have a drum circle hosted by Steve Scales, so bring your drums down and, you know, boogie down, get right. some rhythms going on. Um, and we have uh, the Tai Chi demonstration with um, Jonathan, Jonathan Davis. AKA and, Brother Yaya. Brother Yaya. Brother Yaya. <laughs> and he's great. Um, so you can get some Tai Chi going on. Um, there'll be a couple food trucks down there. Um, Sierra Club. The Sierra Club will oh, be doing. Oh, that's right. Yeah, the Sierra Club storytelling performance. They have a right? storyteller. Um, Carolyn Stearns will be there doing. She's actually written a story just for this event, and it will reflect specific um, environmental concerns that Bridgeport faces specifically. And so, like Long Island Sound and stuff like that, or. Yeah, I'm not exactly sure what what subjects they're going to touch on, but they have their that's their why expertise. People should come up and, exactly. and attend the See event. for yourself. Exactly. <laughs> So yeah, it's good, and it's good promotion right there. Exactly, <laughs> and the Bridgeport Library will be there with the Bookmobile. Bookmobile giving out um, free books to anyone who wants one. So there's really something for everyone. Right, mm -hmm. and you guys mentioned the food trucks. That's kind of important because you want people to stay and be able to eat exactly. and hang out all day long. Starts at 10:30 and lasts till seven. So people, you can't That's run away. You got to stay all day. There's plenty exactly. to go on. They're feeding you too. So there's a lot going on in the downtown Bridgeport area. Um, Earth Day in general, I know you mentioned last year you kind of got together um, to start kind of putting the wheels in motion on this. What do you guys think of Earth Day as a celebration and how important it is to society in general? Well, we're obviously big fans. Yeah. Um, I think it's really important to get that message across to young people and old people alike, but you know, it, it, it's, a, it's a very important issue that we need to take seriously, so we're happy to be doing our part to get that message out there. You guys are kind of kicking off the weekend on Thursday. Earth Day yeah, is Friday. Friday. Exactly. And then hopefully people are going to be, you know, doing stuff that weekend, picking up trash Absolutely. or whatever. And yeah, I know that the, cleaning the planet up a little bit. City of Bridgeport always does a bunch of park cleanups on Earth Day. So hopefully we can inspire some people to get out there. Absolutely. Thank you guys so much for coming on the couch mm -hmm. and to kind of feature this program a little bit. And hopefully we'll be having you on next year for the second annual Bridgeport Earth Fest. Let's hope. Sounds great. <laughs> hope to see you all. Yes. Thank you so much. Oh, and is there a website too? There's MDAC. There is. It's www.mdacmdac-kc.org. Okay. Yeah, that's a lot of uh, a lot of letters. It is, but you know, it's pretty short when you write it down. Right. <laughs> Stephanie and Stephanie, thank you so much for coming on. Best thank of you. luck to you thank next you, week. Steve. That's Thursday, April 21st, 1030 to 7 o'clock, Broad ten, Street. 10 to 7. 10 to 7. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, the entrance is on John Street. John between Street. Between the nail salon and martial arts. Okay. And, and there's the plenty of parking the for everybody. There plenty of parking or yep. you can take the train. Take the train. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. We'll be back next week with Arts and Leisure on the HN Network.